sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope, with no place to begin Redeemed, only beauty remained. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, St. Bridget family. 
a warm welcome to any visitors we have here today, including those joining us, joining us virtually. If you're interested in joining the church, there are welcome packets at all the doors. The Mass intention for today is for our parish family. This is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and the readings begin on page 153. Our opening hymn is number 463, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Please let us join our voices in song. shepherd gathers us together and makes us one. Let us rejoice in God's goodness. Lord Jesus, you are the shepherd of Israel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you lay down your life for your sheep. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all of the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by, by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
a reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. proclaim his gospel worthily and well in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> to John, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they may hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. That is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. The eight-year-olds were learning about Jesus the Good Shepherd in their religious education class. They were given a whole month to practice and memorize Psalm 23. 
And finally, the big day came for them to recite the psalm in front of parents and classmates. The first little boy was extremely nervous when he approached the microphone and he began in a loud voice, the Lord is my shepherd. But then his nerves got the best of him and he couldn't remember another word. After a long tense pause, he finally said, and that's all I need to know. <laughs> you can't argue with that. He got the most important part right anyway. The Lord is my shepherd. The fourth Sunday of Easter is always called Good Shepherd Sunday because the gospel readings are from one of the many passages referring to Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Shepherd is just one of the many titles, descriptions, and metaphors given to Jesus. Jesus is also known as the Lamb of God, the Prince of Peace, the Bread of Life, the Messiah, Redeemer, Emmanuel, Son of God, None of these images are perfect for Jesus because Jesus is all of them and much more. But Jesus the Good Shepherd is one of the most enduring metaphors. It is anchored in the Old Testament and the image would have been so very common to the people of Jesus' day and time. Even today, everybody knows the duties of a shepherd a good shepherd is responsible for the safety and guidance of the sheep. Sheep are pretty defenseless, so the shepherd would have to protect them from bad weather and predators. Sheep don't fare very well off on their own. The shepherd would guide them to green fields and fresh water. To guide the sheep to, to safety, the shepherd would use his staff for direction and protection. And during the night, the sheep would be kept in a pen with only one gate, so the shepherd could watch them more closely. And after a while, the sheep would come to recognize the voice of the shepherd as their source of safety and comfort. Of course, no metaphor is perfect for Jesus, including the good shepherd. For example, Jesus really never was a shepherd. He was a carpenter. The closest he probably ever got to sheep was the wool garments he wore and the roasted lamb he ate at Passover meal. And then we have to remember the other stories about shepherds. How about the story of the lost sheep? What kind of good shepherd would have let the sheep wander off and get lost in the first place? The shepherd quickly found it and carried it home, but what about leaving the other 99 alone while he did it? That was a big risk. The other 99 were left vulnerable and without protection and guidance because the shepherd allowed one of them to wander off. And in today's gospel passage, what kind of shepherd would have sheep that do not belong to his fold? What does that say about unity and loyalty? And just who are those other sheep? When discussing metaphors that describe who Jesus is, it is legitimate to ask those kinds of questions. It makes us think, about how the Good Shepherd doesn't force the sheep, that the sheep are free to choose their behavior, that the Good Shepherd is always ready to search for the lost sheep, and that the lost sheep is always welcomed back into the fold, that Jesus is our shepherd, but we should be careful in judging others because Jesus is their shepherd too. It is also worthwhile to ask questions about the sheep, which is our place in the metaphor. 
What are those things that tempt us to wander away from the guidance of the Good Shepherd? What do we turn to for our safety and comfort, if not Jesus our Shepherd? Do we listen for our Shepherd's voice, instead of being led astray by the shouts of those around us trying to get our attention? All good questions to ask when we consider the sheep who belong to Jesus the Good Shepherd. A key understanding to understanding the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd is to know the relationship between Jesus and God the Father in heaven. Jesus came to do the will of the Father, to follow God's commands, even to the point of laying down his life for the sheep. As the sheep of his flock, the best we can do is follow the example Jesus gives us. Jesus is the true source of our life, safety, and comfort. Wandering astray or listening to any other voice will certainly lead us to danger and trouble. Believing and behaving like Jesus the Good Shepherd is our shepherd really is all we need to know. I believe in one God. As the Good Shepherd tends his father's flock, so we ask God to help our brothers and sisters. That pastors and ministers guide their flocks <clears throat> with tender care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that governments carefully guard the safety and quality of food and water, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that young people preparing for confirmation and graduation be strengthened for a life of loving service through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that Christians spread the peace of Christ and the joy of Easter in every time and place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That the members of this assembly share God's abundant feast with those who cannot be here, especially the sick and the homebound. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, you send your son to care for your flock. Here in Grandwood we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us 
Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Practicing social distancing the best we can, let us offer one another a sign of peace. Shepherd me, O God, beyond. 
beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from that is your life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death is your life. of love in the face of hatred crowning me with love beyond my power to hold shepherd me oh God beyond my wants beyond my fears from death into life Follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shattered me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death. To the second communion song is number 177, Roll Away the Stone.
and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Next Sunday morning, we celebrate First Communion with Caleb Bragg and Toby Cocker. And I ask Warren to serve for Caleb next Sunday, and I ask Molly to serve for Toby, and they agree. So we'll have a wonderful Sunday morning First Communion next Sunday. Toby and Caleb, you stay in church after church. Prayer blankets are available for anybody who wants them. Sometimes a prayer blanket is all you need uh, just to hang on to because uh, something's not right. So please take them. We also have extra materials to make prayer blankets over in the corner. And today is our last religious ed class for the year. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Righteousness and truth, 
It is my joy to greet all of you here on the first day of May, the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. And what a great Saturday this is. I want to thank Eva Gonzalez, as well as the young people who will be leading the rosary. Uh, what a gift we have in the blessings of our Blessed Mother and the gift of the Holy Rosary, a way for us to pray the mysteries of Christ and also to pray in a way that we're doing it together. Uh, it's not only a great tradition, but it's something that is alive and well within our church today. So I thank you for it. I want to thank Father Tobin, who is uh, the vicar for Hispanic ministry for the Archdiocese, for his great role in this too. I'm so excited that you all are part of this wonderful way of honoring our Blessed Mother and honoring the gift of prayer in the rosary. You know, when you say the Hail Mary, you're not only saying an awful lot of scripture, but you're also meditating on a number of the mysteries of Christ's life. And that gift of meditation not only is a prayer offered to God through our Blessed Mother, through her intercession, but it also has a great calming effect on our lives and an effect that allows us to become more the children of God that God wants us to be. St. Joseph, pray for us. Our Blessed Mother, intercede for us. And blessings to all of you.